bust the 500 win barrier in his 21st year with the Duke Blue Devils. 516 and 161. Here's the way his team will line up with Williams, James, Dunleavy, Battier, and Boozer. And I tell you, Mike, right away, you look at Jason Williams, you see his numbers. He absolutely does everything well on the basketball court, and he really runs the show for this Duke basketball team. Tough matchup. Gary Williams down his 12th year, 231 victories. Of those five victories at Duke, one came at Duke last year. Here's his lineup, Blake Dixon, Mouton, Morris, and Baxter. And you offset talent with talent. Juan Dixon, outstanding scorer of the basketball, takes care of the ball, gets his teammates involved. This is going to be a dynamite basketball game. Brad, you're absolutely right. And if you like points, we've got points. Two of the most prolific offenses in college basketball. Duke is number one in the country again. Averaging 93.7 points a game. And Maryland is number three overall in the nation. Number two in the ACC. And Virginia is fourth. It's incredible. The ACC is so strong this year. Quality basketball. Player of the year candidate Shane Battier. Great young player Mike Dunleavy. Blake, the assist leader in the ACC, Terrence Morris, consensus all ACC, and it hasn't been this loud in here in a long, long time. This is a fun atmosphere to watch a basketball game in, and, and Maryland has to come out right away and get involved in this basketball game. Duke is a strong starting team, which builds consistency throughout the game, and they'll run away. Stay with them from the jump ball. Carl Hess, Gerald Boudreau, and Tim Higgins are the officials, a good crew. Dunleavy controls and gives it up to Jason Williams. Williams guarded by Blake. Nate James out of the corner for three. Boozer offensive rebound over Baxter. Big strong rebound by Boozer inside. Great box out positions. Nate James on the wide open three. Already they're going to show that they're going to shoot that extended shot. Dude, Mouton. Steve Blake's come in and done a great job running this offense. Danny Miller comes in off the bench, gives him a little ball handling, a little explosiveness as far as offense is concerned. Blake knocked away by Boozer as they tried to get it in. Shot clock is down to five. Blake loses the ball. Shot clock at three. He's going to have to put it up. Lost it again. Got it off in time, but it's a shot clock violation. Great defensive stand by Duke. A lot of switching. A lot of guys helping out. Nowhere to go for Steve Blake. Ended up in a one-on-one -on -one situation trying to get around Jason Williams. Nowhere to go. Pressure by Blake on Williams. It's a lot of full court pressure from Maryland. Gary Williams wants his team to be intense. And that's, that comes from playing full court man-to-man -man basketball. Patty a low against Morris. What a great matchup there. That's as good as it gets. Double team. Nice reach in and a steal by Dixon. Don't flirt with the basketball around Juan Dixon. He would just flat take it away from you. Great defense. Number one in the ACC in steals. And then Morris on a nice lob from Blake. Terrence Morris, I believe, over the past several games, is starting to show why he is a consensus All-American candidate. Really becoming a solid, solid threat every night. He got off to horrible starts this year, but you're right. He has been making the shots, making the good rebounds. Dunleavy left alone for three. You can't leave anybody on that team alone. That's just deadly. This basketball team, they're starting five. All these guys shoot over 50% from the floor. And for him to have the confidence to step up and make that big three-point shot as a, as a shot in their offense, incredible. Blake at the baseline with a miss. That's going to be a foul on Baxter coming over the back trying for the offensive rebound. Baxter Lonnie's got to do a better job. You can't get caught watching that ball after a shot. When that ball goes up, you got to move your feet. Big guys have a tendency to stand and watch the ball in flight. Next thing you know, some little guy gets in front over the back. Maryland did something interesting this week. They put tape on the floor three feet outside of the 19-foot, uh, nine-inch circle, which is the three-point line, because they know Duke will shoot beyond that. They wanted to fence that tonight. They're done at about 22, and it's an air ball. Great play by Nate James. He knocked the ball off of Steve Blake, gaining back possession. Going back to what you're saying, Mike, about moving that line out, what that does, what Coach Williams wanted was his guys to come out and defend in that area beyond the line, so they're up in their face. Out of the corner, Williams with a three. Loose ball goes to Dixon. Loves to run. 
really likes to push the tempo of the basketball game. That's where he's effective. Baxter. Woo! Baxter is over the top. James Battier. I tell you, it's James Battier. That's why he's the top defensive player in the country. Williams to James Fowl on Dixon. Dixon thought he got all ball, so did the crowd. I don't think this, this crowd's going to think it's all ball every time. I think he got a little right. arm there. See the drive to the basket by Jason Williams. He sees the floor so extremely well. Nice pass. Oh, oh. Looked like all ball, all didn't ball. it? All ball. I retract my statement. Watch this great defensive help by the defensive player of the year, Shane Battier. And this is the third year you can say that about Battier. It just seems like he's been there forever. He's such an excellent young basketball player. Only two other players in the history of college basketball have ever won or shared defensive player of the year three times. I think Battier has a lot to do that. Yes, I agree. He's just such a superb timing on his shot blocks. And Nate three James three. at the line. He does everything well. Doesn't he? And like we were talking about earlier, you know, you were pointing out his statistics. It, you know, we talk about Jason Williams because he's so exciting. But Shane Battier does all the little things, and he's excellent at doing this thing. And he never comes out of the ball game. 7-2, Duke on an early run. Morris. They'd love him to be more oh. aggressive. Look at that. Like that. Terrence Morris showing some real strength down on that block. He's turning right into the middle, right to the goal. That's what you want to see with your big guy. Terrence Morris has to want the ball. Tonight, he looks like he does. He has to be a factor if they're going to play this deep basketball team. Williams pull up jumper. Pretty good defense there. And Baxter with a rebound. Big Lonnie Baxter going up with two hands, grabbing and snatching that rebound down. Mouton had the three and passed on it. Great patience by this basketball team. Baxter tries a tough pass, and it's picked off. Here comes Dunley. Wow. Wow. wow, look at that. My goodness. Holy cow, what range by Battier. I mean, you come down in the transition, you're, you're in transition defense, and the guy stopped 35 feet from the basket and shoots. What do you do? Battier isn't even the best three-point shooter on this team at 47-1. Williams is. Amazing what confidence will do for you. Mouton had that partially blocked Nate James right in his face. Yeah. Gonna get back. Rob James can't. Get it, then gets it back and puts it in. You gotta play every play when you play in Duke. They keep playing, they play, they play. No matter what happens, good or bad to them, they continue to play hard. Dig. This is a brilliant basketball team. Make no mistake about it. The one game they lost, they lost at the end of a long road trip on the road at number one Stanford. On a last second shot. On a last second shot. This is an incredible basketball team. We're here. That's what you want to see, Terrence Morris. He is he's bringing his game early. This is going to be excellent for this basketball team getting on into the late part of the game. When he gets started early, he usually finishes well. He's hit all three of his shots. He is the only Turk scorer so far, and they're down 12-6. Not being able to match that three-point shot has gotten behind by six points. Hoosier reach in by Dixon, and if the foul's on Dixon, it will be his second. We'll check out the foul in a second. Nation in scoring the past two years. Currently, they're first at 93-7 a game. We asked Gary Williams, how do you defeat that offensive machine? You better figure out a way to score because even if you shut them down some, they're still going to shoot a pretty good percentage. And, and that's what you face. That, and I think it puts some pressure on some teams when you do play Duke, the fact that you know, your players know, going in that you better shoot it well or else you're not going to have much of a chance to win the game. And right now, Duke is off to a fast start. Battier hit a long three. Dunleavy hit a three. Battier takes the three this time. Crossover got by Morris. Short on the jump shot. Christensen has checked in in the middle. He'll give Boozer a rest. Good defensive pressure by the Turks on the uh, defensive end. Did a good job shutting down the lane on Battier. Taj Holden who has come back from a foot injury, has really given this team an awful lot. He is a big presence off the bench. Good defense. He's a tough kid, good rebounder. And Chris Duhon is in for Duke as well. Woo! By Christensen. Wow, Matt Christensen gets up high. Holden will try a three. Rebound to Mouton. Can't get the follow. Mouton again. What effort, what effort, what effort. That's what it's all about. He is a very emotional player, a transfer out of Tulane who can score in traffic. He's been huge to this basketball, this basketball team's effort over the past 14 games. 
Teddy, a good hit fake, leans into one, and he's fouled by Morris. Gary Williams really upset about that, didn't think there was enough contact to warrant the whistle. See Byron Mouton, he goes up with a little shot. The touch shot doesn't go down. Look at the bodies flying. He continues to play. Great effort, gets rewarded with a little touch. Great hustle. Gary Williams thought Shane Battier may have leaned in a little bit on that shot. Battier against Morris. Forced a shot, got it anyway, and he's fouled. Boy, what perseverance down the offensive end by Shane Battier. Made several good post moves. The defense stayed with him. He continued to make moves. They still got a shot on And he's doing it against a tremendous shot blocker in Morris. Oh, Morris is an excellent defender. You see Morris using his body very good, stays on the floor. Taj Holden comes over and tries to help. We well, had to assume one of the keys to this game was Duke staying out of foul trouble. Instead, Maryland gets an early foul trouble. Morris has two. Baxter has That's two. That's exactly right. We didn't plan on the, the Terps being in foul trouble. That's huge. These guys getting these fouls, that opens it up for Duke to be able to come down and run some offense. They score, score seven of, of Duke's first 12 points on transition basket. Batty A, an excellent free throw shooter, gives him six points for the game. It's 15-8. Blue double. Play smart if you marry. Blake trying to penetrate with the running one hand and wouldn't go for him. It wasn't a bad basketball shot. Nice move to the basket, a little contact, didn't stay down. Nice post up by Boozer, nice and big. Wanted the ball against Baxter, looking for two fouls, rimmed out on a Battier offensive rebound. Goes into the corner and fires. That'll be on Dunley, the end of the back. Good box out by Maryland. They got to get on the backboard. They need to get some defensive rebounds. They're a very good rebounding team. And when they do get the basketball and control it, they win the majority of their basketball games. Got to rebound the ball. 13-50 to go first half. Duke with a 15-8 lead. Duke in their 22-game road winning streak. They've beaten opponents by an average of 17 points. <laughs> it's been the win margin. Nobody has dominated the ACC like this ever. Foul away from the ball. It's going to be a hole. It's going to be on Boozer. That's his first. Look at that. That was right. Look at those numbers right. That is incredible. I mean, these guys are playing AC ACC basketball teams. You look at the ACC this year, you got, you know, four teams in the top 15. Look at that number. That's incredible. They have not lost on the road since February 5th. 98 at North Carolina. Nice shot. Boom, Dixon. Woo! Juan Dixon showing his little dipsy doodle. Up and under, using the rim to protect the ball. Can't block that shot. Dixon, who is fifth in the ACC in scoring, gets his first bucket. Right back in this ball game. All they have to do is play hard, play consistent. Blake, a lot of pressure on Williams. Steve Blake, great. Taking care of the basketball. Excellent assist. Dunley, the nice. I tried to get to the pass. Knocked away by Kenny Miller. Miller will fire for three. Boozer with a rebound. Good shot opportunity. Like Miller coming in and that, following that transition for that three. That's a good shot. Boozer gives it back to Williams. Battier in the corner over Taj Holden. Miller with another rebound. Ahead to Holden. Williams the only one back. <laughs> If you go to the rim, you better go straight hard because he's coming. Duhon back the other way. Racehorse basketball. Battier picked up about 10 yards on that play and then stuck. Oh, 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 man. Ty's hole back and down. Saw some strength. He's not going anywhere. He had his last shot rejected. I think he took it personal. And it's Mike Krzyzewski's turn to gripe. He thought that was a charge. Look at that. Nice defense. Defense gives. A little foul. Ty's I thought over. that would have been a good no call. I, I agree. You? I think that's an excellent no call. He got position. The Battier yielded as he backed sure. in. If he stays there and falls, it's a foul. He yielded each time. Gave him closer shot to the basket. Holding at a Little River, New Jersey. Really runs well for a big guy. Oh, yeah. Short on the free throw. Battier with another rebound. He's out on that break. 
but he got a shot blocked, but he was running like a, a 6'4 guard down the floor. Carl Hess has already warned both coaches. Sit down, shut up. <laughs> this is a huge game, and they will give the officials all the lip they can until they're told not to. Oh, nice under, oh. oh no bucket with the foul on Boozer. Well, that's good basketball. Maryland's playing smart basketball. Duke's trying to get them in that run up and down basketball game where they can come in and shoot threes in the transition. Maryland's taking advantage of missed, missed shot opportunities, pushing the ball. Look at this nice pass right there. Little bump, almost stays down. Two fouls on Boozer, and that is Duke's major concern for the entire length of the season. How to keep their undersized center in the ball game because their depth is really suspect. Christensen will come into the ball game right now. One of the things that's hurt their depth, Brad, the fact that Nick Horvath has been hurt and he doesn't seem to be getting better. Horvath would give them so many different chances to move guys around. That's an excellent point. Horvath, a very good shooter, is good around the basket, but with the injury, has been unable to play, may not play this year. And also Casey Sanders, who started out the season right. so well, they thought he was going to be a huge asset has struggled at times, but will I think he will get better as the end of the year goes on and will be a factor. Mike Krzyzewski has spent uh, this entire time with Miller at the free throw line just really getting on the officials unhappy the way the last four or five possessions have gone. It's been closed to two points on a 5 nothing Maryland run. Williams for three. Fighting for his own rebound. Got it. Man, if he's taking that long of a shot and you see Gary Williams, he's all right. They have to be able to gather that basketball up. You can't let him run in and get it after he's playing horse there. Go get him. Box him out. Nice move. Martison. Oh, a pretty reverse. Big Martison showing a little stability there, big fella. Nice reverse layup. Hey, is this fun or This is great. This is as good as it gets right here, Mike. Two-point game again. Dunleavy comes down. Jason Williams took a lot of maturity. Slowing the ball down, spreading the court. Penetration in a dish. Tipped out of bounds by Miller. We've got a timeout on the court. 11-12 to go. First half. Players are stepping up. The starters and guys off the bench. Patrick Brad Darty, our entire ESPN crew with you. Glad you could join us. Duke has already taken eight three-point shots in this ball game. Just They've hit of, only two of them. Yeah, part of their offense. They come down, and everyone's just roaming. You know, they're like predators on offense. Everybody's huh. looking for that opportunity, and they're excellent at shooting the basketball. Boozer will stay on the bench with his two fouls. Lonnie Baxter and Terrence Morris both picked up two quick ones for Maryland. Morris is back in there. Baxter is still on the bench beside Gary Williams. Tipped and finally stolen. Dixon. Great pass pass and Miller finishes with tied. What good basketball. Excellent court awareness by Juan Dixon. Miller with a strong finish. Good defense. Nate James oh, baseline man. and he answers. Nate James. A silent assassin. He comes in with that killer look in his eyes, ready to play. He always is around the basket. Good defender, tough kid. Drew Nichols, a much better ball handler this year, got it to Dixon at the baseline. That was an incredible shot. Questionable pass along the baseline, and more, even more incredible shot by Dixon. Tied at 19. Dunley. Christensen's has got to step into that middle. That back pick is, pick is set for Battier. The defense goes with him. His man's just wide open. Steal by Dixon. He's got Nicholas with him two on one. No! Takes the lead. I'll tell you what, guys. They're putting a lot of pressure on Duke. They're getting one shot, and that's it. That's the difference between the first five minutes of this ball game. No second shot opportunity. The Terps on top for the first time. Oh. Knocked away, but a foul on Miller. That's okay. That's a good foul. You want to keep it. You want aggressive fouls. You want your kids reaching and digging and grabbing the clock. If you can establish that, the officials get used to seeing that. You may get an opportunity where you get away with one, and it helps your ball club. Look at that strip right there, Juan Dixon. 
I'll tell you, he's excellent with his hands around the basketball. You don't flirt with it. The problem right is when you back. hack down like that, a lot of times you'll, you won't get the call. I mean, they're going to call a foul on you. 90% of the time, and it's easy. When someone slaps down, if the ball comes up, they got all yeah. arm. If the ball goes down, yeah. it's all ball. Dunleavy, meanwhile, hits the three. Duke regains the lead. Here's Martisic backing in on Christensen. Good defense by Christensen. He comes in and gives us some good minutes, quality minutes. They got some great time from him the other night. Morris, fouled by Christensen. The bucket counts. That's just incredible athletic ability right there. Like I say, Terrence Morris is starting to rise to the top and show why people picked him as player of the year in the ACC before the season and an All-American candidate. Very talented young man. He has eight points so far. Look at that hold off. Look at that body control. Good fundamentally sound basketball all the way around. Morris has not missed a shot. Four for four from the floor. Terrence Morris shooting one. Really stepped up his game once the ACC season started. In conference, he's averaging 18 and a half points, 10 and a half rebounds. Maryland back on top. Morris will go out to a standing ovation. Well deserved. Gary Williams now with the luxury of keeping Morris and Baxter on the bench for those two fouls. And get back. Two Honda Dunleavy out of the corner, a deadly three-point shooter. I mean, if they come down, they spread to court in their transition offense, and they're looking for that three-point shot. And then, I mean, 90% of the time, they're not even looking to cut to the basket. They're looking to spot up. Dunleavy has nine. He's hit three threes. Dixon, and out of nowhere, the block. On Nate James just with a wonderful defensive play. Duhon will try a three. Okay. Nicholas. This, team, this Duke basketball team will put up 15, 16 threes in the game. Nicholas passed on the threes. An excellent long-range shooter. Duke is at 4 of 11 bombs so far. That's under their shooting position. Nice hook. Nice hook. Ties Holden. Boy, what a nice look. Post move. Ties Holden using that big body. He posts up so big and strong. You turn in. You create all the contact. And that little baby hook, which is unstoppable. It's a tough mismatch for Dunley. Very tough. A hole away from the ball. Let's see who picks up the personal. Look at Holden here, nice and big. He's only about a foot or two off the block. Watch the little baby hook. Nothing you can do with it. Just hope he misses. Martisic gets his first. One good thing that, that Maryland has is with the depth that they have, if they can continue to be aggressive offensively, right. they're coming down getting some fouls called. Now they're in the penalty. But to slow the clock down and not let Duke set up in their transition spot on three opportunity, it may work in their advantage. The Martisich will come in, and a good-looking freshman, Chris Wilcox, 6'10", will come in for him. Dunleavy at the line. Well, that size we talk about, Chris Wilcox, 6'10", jumps out of the gym. Nice young player. Dunleavy plays exactly the way you would expect a coach's son to play. Just extremely aware of everything around him. All the fundamentals. Can't get the second free throw to go. He punched the little muscle on this year. Outstanding young man. Nice pump fake. Blake got away from Duhon. Well, good basketball awareness. Steve Blake, a real heady basketball player, showing a lot of savvy there. Got into the heart of the defense, in the middle of the floor. That's where you want to be on the basketball court. Blake has his first two. Good three three by James. Excellent job rebounding the basketball. Capture the ball. Nice pass. Oh! What a pass by Blake. What a goodness. What awareness by Blake. And awareness as well by Holden. Nice backdoor pass. Holden can run. Williams. And the crowd is really into it. Place is rocking. Blake with a brilliant pass as Holden sprints down the lane. All right, thank you, Chris. Boy, we've got a beauty here. Terps have come back to take a four-point lead on Duke. 
And Maryland, after turning it over three times early, has gone the last nine minutes and 15 seconds without a turnover. You do that against the uh, Maryland defense, or the Duke defense has done a good job. Yeah. And look at this. Maryland with 13 points off the bench. Duke, and no, no real surprise, no scoring off the bench as yet. Right. There's the depth we talked about with Maryland, being able to utilize a lot of individuals. Trying to wear down a very good Duke basketball team. Not a very deep team. Good post up by Hogan. Boozer's back in. Tough matchup for Hogan. Shoot over. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, Ty's Hogan. Somebody forgot to tell him. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's an element. If he continues to make shots like that, that is an element that this Maryland basketball team doesn't have with that six point shooter. Wilcox knocks that one off his leg with a steal, and Battier comes back to get a tie up, but the possession arrow will give it to Maryland. Great hustle. When you see that basketball get to the floor, you have to get down and tie it up every time. No matter, you got to give yourself a chance to at least get the possession arrow, even if you don't know whose it is. Get after the ball, get your hands on it. Taj Holden has hit eight points off the bench. Talked about him earlier, maybe being an X Factor. The Terps now shooting 58% and lead by six. Duke has been held to 26 points. We're almost three-fourths of the way through the first half. The post up. Oh, nice move. Holding again. Foul. Knocked out of bounds by Dixon. And they're doing everything they can, I think, to get that third foul on Boozer. Rivalry week continues tomorrow on ESPN 2 at 1 o'clock. More exciting ACC basketball. Number 6 North Carolina makes the short trip to Raleigh to take on the NC State Wolfpack. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Just said a wicked pick on Steve Blake. Right, it really cracked his jaw pretty hard. Maryland plays excellent defense after that early spurt. Good pass. The hands of Boozer. What well pass? Boozer's got to be ready to catch that basketball. Got a nice cut to the basket. Got to be aware of where the ball is, especially if you want to score. I always knew where the ball was. Yes, sir. <laughs> you want those points? That's right. Got to pay attention. Seven Duke turnovers. Jason Williams already has four. Good pass. Oh, that pass. the ball and Blake finding those guys. What a pass. Twenty-six with six eleven to go in the first half. That is young Michael Vick who was on hand tonight. The brilliant quarterback from Virginia Tech who is going to be going to the NFL next year and the likelihood is that he will either be the number one draft choice of the San Diego Chargers or they will trade that pick to get other choices but well, one way or another he is going to be a success in the NFL this kid without can question fly. without question the motors look at the points in the paint right here Maryland dominating Duke but I'll tell you right now it doesn't add up to anything until the end of the ball game this Duke basketball club is not going to go away you better continue to play hard the whole game Duke has some shot well after the initial three or four minutes Battier down the lane Bounds and they turned it over again. That's the eighth time. A lot of unforced errors, it seems, on behalf of Duke. Nice dribble to the basket. May have got hit on the arm there, but that's a part of the game. Went off his knee. Blake, head always up, always looking for the open man. Oh, good. Tough pass. Right into the teeth of the defense. Too hard a pass. Poser. Pulled up and hauled with a rebound. Now Blake wants to run. Three on two. Dixon for three. Wow. Little transition of their own. Juan Dixon matching that offensive output of any, any Duke player at this point. Once again, another pick. This will be a foul on Holden. Boy, Battier set a pick, and Steve Blake 
I'm not sure he knows where he is right now. He just got cream. That's the second time that's happened. Whoever Battier's coming off of, which is Holden, he has to talk to Steve Blake. He's going to get his head knocked off all night. you got to be yelling to Steve Blake. There's a pick so he can at least look up and dodge that, that impact. That's what Gary Williams is telling his teammates right now. you got to help him before gotcha. they kill him. Got to talk. He's going to get knocked out. He's running the Maryland's pick. It's an 11 nothing run for Maryland, and they're up by 11. Incredible run by Maryland. Really showing his desire to compete, to be dialed in, to be focused. And that all goes right back to their coach, Gary Williams. He coaches his guts out every play. Duhon at the line hits the free throw, and now Holden Wilcox will go out. Taj Holden has been a huge addition coming back off of that injury. Martisich will come back in for Maryland. Bringing size back into the basketball game. Holden coming off of a, a broken metatarsal in his foot. You have to be careful. Don't want to overexert it. But, boy, he's really played a great basketball game tonight. Brad, eight points and three rebounds off the bench in the first half. Those are pretty good numbers. Those are huge numbers. Coming off the bench in an entire game, that's a good number. That's right. 37-28 as we approach five minutes. Williams on Blake. Mouton against Dunleavy. Good defense there. Very good defense. Nowhere to go. Maryland playing with great patience. Mouton offensive rebound fouled by Dunleavy. Byron Mouton has just been unbelievable on the backboard. Really showing his presence. Making it felt, I should say. Getting a lot of extra second shots. Offensive rebounds. Explosive young player. Five rebounds. He's got three offensive. Excellent. Mouton transferred from Tulane, had to sit out last year. And since he became the starter, this team is 13 and 1. He beat out Danny Miller for that uh, fifth starting sure. spot. Push Miller to the bench. Now Miller comes off. Excellent player coming off the bench. Mouton's just so athletic. A slash gets to the front of the goal. You see his rebounding ability. Speaks for itself. His numbers. At Tulane, average 13 five right now. He's averaging almost 12 points a game for Maryland. The lead's back to 11. This is a tremendous performance by Maryland so far. The Terps playing about as well as they could coming in, and they're continuing to do it. They need to sustain this energy level that they started the game with, because Duke, like I say, will continue to pound consistently. Look at that. Williams got it back. Then the steal by Dixon. Oh, in and out. That would have been here. The rim is so unkind. That was halfway down, Mike. How that came out. Great hustle by Maryland on defense. Right now, they are certainly outplaying the number two team in the country. Boozer fouled by Martison. I'll tell you, Martison's done such a great job bodying up. Shouldn't have slapped his arm. He had his body. There's no way he's going to make that shot. I want you to watch this. Boozer does a good job posting up. All right, he's all body. Look at that body right there. He's got him. That's no foul. There's the foul. Well, you're absolutely right, Brady. Right at the very end, he throws the hand. And there's Blake. Watch this hustle. Look at Jason. Look at the strength of Jason Williams. He just says, hey, I'm going to knock you out of the way, little guy. They're about the same size, but Jason Williams is like a defensive back. Boozer at the free throw line, a 75% shooter, hits the first to get another. Gary Williams has really had the luxury of shuffling his players in and out in his first half. Made excellent use of his bench. Trying to keep everybody fresh. Really monitoring the game well. Gary Williams, just a wonderful basketball coach. Doesn't get the credit I think he deserves. Really works his tail off on these kids. And, and he's brought Maryland basketball up, back up to the top of the, the league. The Terps making all the plays. They're up by a dozen. Great court awareness. Let's see how this Duke team responds. Good defense. Great switch right here at the top between Miller and Mouton. No foul. Dunleavy hangs in the lane. Missed it. Mouton with a rebound. Hey, how do you like that? How do you like having a 6'6 six, six guy who rebounds as well as Mouton? He has a half a dozen so far. That's a kick, and there will be a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Maryland giving Duke everything it can handle, and then some. The Terps up by a dozen with 3.30 to go in the first half. 
campus that the Duke Blue Devils have faced all year long. They are down by 12 to Maryland, 41-29. 3.30 to go first half, and here are the numbers. Maryland shooting a crisp 56%. They have 17 big points off the bench, and they're dominating inside so far, 24-6 points in the paint. Maryland's been able to keep waves of people coming in and out of the ballgame and people that are contributing to the game. You know, Maryland has led every game this season at the end. So this, this doesn't look like it's going to be any Nice reach in by Nate James, and he gets it away and calls timeout. It'll be Duke basketball. They have squandered some leads this year, Mike. That has been the thing. They have they squandered have. some leads. So let's hope they continue to... Play well, they, they've led every game and they've lost four, right. so there's at least four that got away from them. Coming up on Big Monday on ESPN, we invite you to watch a triple header with us of College Hoops action on Big Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern. Georgetown, a team that lost its second straight today, still ranked 11th in the country against number eight Syracuse, and at nine, number four Kansas against Missouri, and at midnight following Sports Center Utah and BYU. That's Big Monday on ESPN. Right now we've got Big Saturday Night for you from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. You can come out and try to regroup a little bit. They're a little bit off the hill. A lot of their long shots just didn't have opportunities to, to go in or make those shots. Then they got out rebounded and got beat back in transition. Something they usually do to opponents. Well, they were Bruce. Maryland dominating the board so far. They have five more rebounds than Duke. Dunn leading into the lane. Pulls up. Can't hit the shot. He's had a couple of those. He could not go for it. He's going to move. Every time he gets near the basket, there's a body on him. That's the difference. Mouton penetrating offensive foul on Mouton. Good defense. Great defense. A little out of control. Mouton tried to make the move, and the defense was there. And that's what really keys Duke's offense, is the defense that gets turnovers, draws charges. It's those all important stops. Maryland's done a good job themselves on getting stopped. Patio gets hold and leans in. Marlisic, great help. Great help. Mike Krzyzewski was up. He wanted a goal to Move to three and trains it. Wow. I like Steve Blake seeing the entire floor. Cross court pass. Catching Mouton in the corner. Mouton with nine points and seven rebounds. The Turks are up by 15. What a first half for Gary Williams' club. Boozer short. Holden with the rebound, and we will stop the game for a balloon. Brad, go out there and get that, will you? There is no way. I couldn't jump off of two chairs and get that thing. <laughs> yeah, he has an excellent pass cross court. Nothing but nylon. Mouton is excited. That's what you like to see. He had only made 11 three-pointers all year coming into this ballgame. But you can tell the look of a guy who knows he's on fire. He thinks yeah. he can put it in from anywhere. I mean, that, that basket looks as big as, a, as the ocean right now. Yep. Keep throwing it to him. Duke, three points in over six minutes. And they are down by 15, their largest deficit of the year. Terps trying to add to it. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Couldn't finish. Tip goes go. Pulls the rebound. That's a move by Martis. I'd like to see that. Duke doesn't have a field goal since just under the 10 minute mark. Over seven minutes. That's not going to happen off. Williams fouled by Blood. Boy, I say that looks like pretty good defense right there. Let's take a good, another look at that. Looks like Blake had slid his feet and gotten in front. Coming up on the uh, courtyard by Marriott halftime report, Chris Fowler will have our Sports Center segment. Michigan State loses. Tennessee also loses. And uh, take a look at the rest of the top 25. Uh, we're going to see that again. I think it looked like uh, Williams had a little contact with Blake. He was sliding laterally, but maybe he wasn't set. Fishers do a great job. Can't see him all from over here. 
you know sometimes it happens maybe this is not going to be Duke's night they are doing very uncharacteristic things Williams just missed a free throw he has four turnovers has hit only one field goal from the floor definitely not a uh, a staple or a characteristic tonight for him or any of his teammates thus far 44 30 Brooke, first half for Maryland Blake about that one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, we need to see that again. I don't know about that. Let's see here. It goes by. Oh, man. Don't know. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's, that was the case. Uh, I mean, he had no other way to go. That's the only way he could get by the young man. Two quick ones on Blake. Morris and Baxter had picked up two early for Maryland. But they've stayed out of uh, heavy foul trouble. Well, you got to overcome those things. You got to continue to play. That's where the depth's going to come in and be big for this team. Williams, and that one's kicked. There'll be a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Nicholas will come in. He's really developed into a really good backup point guard as yes. well as a good shooter. Do not lose much when he comes in the game. Don't lose anything at all. Let me take that back. Excellent player. Really shoots the ball well. I'd like to have Blake, though. Oh, great hustle. Almost stolen by Dixon, but he stepped on the sideline. What great awareness. Maryland's quickness really showing tonight. I mean, they're, they're, tonight, they're an excellent defensive ball club this first half. This ball game. They're playing as well as I've seen them play all year defensively. Duke working on an eight-minute stretch without a field goal. See Gary stalking the sidelines over there. And I'm not sure why Tim Higgins was over at the scorer's table. We've had a delay, and now Gary talking to him, and now we're ready to go again. Well, he's trying to get away from Gary. Gary's trying to <laughs> It's a good idea. What a competitor. Gary Williams. Duke really needs a couple of buckets here. And Patty is the guy to go wow. to and he drains a three. That's huge. That's a big shot. That puts him back with an opportunity to come out in the second half. Makes him break. And he'll get right back in and if you give him a chance. The lead is 11. Here's the red hot Mouton. Morris back in the ball game against Battier. Tough shot. Won't go. Offensive rebound. That won't go. Christensen is in, but Maryland controls again. Great, great offensive segment by Maryland. Be patient. Holden looking inside. Mouton. Oh, nice. Three in the lane, and Mouton hits another one. Bill is going to be a slash and a rebound here. And a ball handle. What else can we add to this kid's resume as a player? The junior has 11 points and eight rebounds. Williams nearly threw it away. Duhon back out to Battier for another three. This one's short. Duhon with a follow. Chris Duhon, the freshman. McDonald's All-American coming in. Very heady player. 46-35. Duke showing a little spark here at the end of the half. Look at Mouton here. I mean, he look at him. He just comes to play. Great, great possession here. He's active. Look at him moving. He continues to move his feet. Go somewhere. You don't have the basketball. You go somewhere. Great space. Nice step in. Right into the middle of the lane. That's where you want to go. The heart of the defense when you have the ball. Make him collapse. Look at those numbers. Look at those numbers. That's remarkable. Woo! Because he does half of that in the second half. This team's got a great chance to win. That's right. The lead is 11. The Terps have been up by as many as 15 and survived a, a great run by Duke in the first three or four minutes of this game. They came out on fire. Duke came out. Typical Duke basketball, attacking aggressive, shooting those open three-point shots. The three-point shots went astray on them. Maryland started collecting the basketball, rebounding, making transition baskets. Run the clock down, Mike. Get this last shot. Going to the locker room with your lead. You're going with the 11-point lead. Shot clock in the main time clock are basically the same. Comes Blake. Holden. Oh, Maryland with an outstanding first 
first half performance, Jason Williams has been held to three. Coming up, the courtyard by Marriott. Halftime report. The lead here is 11. Let's go to Chris Fowler. All right, Mike, thank you. One of the great streaks in sports. 22 straight ACC road wins in deep danger. You don't count Duke out, but this is kind of uncharted waters for this Duke team. They scrapped from behind against Temple, went back and forth against Illinois, but they never have faced a deficit like this on the road so far this year. As Mike mentioned, already some carnage in the top five today. Coming up, highlights of Michigan State as they went to Columbus, ran into a very tough Buckeye team. Tennessee went down at Georgia. We are coming back in the Courtyard by Marriott Report. But let's go to the highlights in Columbus. You know, it was just on Sunday. Let's go back out to Maryland. I'm told there are shoes on the court, and the officials had to sort something out. Let's go back to Mike Patrick now and Brad hey, Chris, Dory and see what's up out there at Coalfield House. We're still fellas. trying to find out if there is some time left in this half. The last shot, because it did not hit the rim, would have been a shot clock violation. There were a few tenths of a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. The scoreboard showing triple zero, but they are consulting at the scorer's table see if there's any time left. Oh, almost didn't look like he caught any iron. Luke Duke gets to uh, inbounds the ball. It would be, I believe, less than a second left if they give them all the time that is remaining. Throw the ball to the front of the goal. Try to get a tip in. Already the most points Duke has given up in the first half all season, 46. That is Tim Higgins, who is consulting with the official score. Danny Miller put a headset on him. He's got the best uh, <laughs> best angle of anybody. Caught no iron. So it would be a shot clock violation. The question is, uh, they put 1.4 seconds up on the scoreboard. A full court pass to try to score. Well, you might remember if you're a Duke basketball fan, they have done this before. This length of the court pass and scored. Yes. Name Christian Lakener yes. ring a bell. Battier moved out of there and it goes to Williams and he put it in. Wow, what a play. Excellent. Holy cow. And now Gary Williams is exploding. He is going right at the official scorer's table. He is extremely upset. But what a play by Duke to score at the buzzer. The Super Bowl isn't until tomorrow, but this was a <laughs> touchdown. Excellent play. Nate James as well as Jason Williams both break the basket. Decoys Boozer. Excellent play. Excellent. All right, Chris, we mean it this time. We're at the half. It's 46-37. Let's go to you. Mike, I thought Grand Hill's inbound to Leitner, a play you guys talked about was a great inbound pass. That was better. Hits the receiver in stride. Leave it to Duke to make some. And they got their favor returned on him. That's coming up. ESPN's presentation of Rivalry Week is presented by New York Life, the company you keep. ESPN's presentation of Rivalry Week is presented by New York Life, the company you keep. We're to half at College Park where Maryland is leading Duke 46-37. Brad, Maryland played as well as Maryland could play in that first half. Without question, they got a lot of help from everyone. One through nine, everyone came in and participated, especially this young man, Byron Mouton. Excellent job, 11 points, eight rebounds early. They went right at Duke, put a lot of pressure on him, made him defend. Taj Holden comes in, gives him 10 big minutes, eight points, five rebounds. Excellent job. This young man, Terrence Morris, got him started with nine points early. Two fouls, but still made his presence felt. And this young man right here, Steve Blake, making excellent pass. Seven assists in the first half. And several of them of the spectacular Variety. Here are the numbers. Maryland still shooting better than 50%. Duke, the best three-point uh, three shooting team in the ACC, has hit only five of 14, and Maryland is killing the Blue Devils on the board. 26 to 16. Question is, do you go in at half and take a deep breath and say, all right, look what we've done? Or do you go in there and you relace your shoes and come out and jump on them again? Bad pass by 
done leaving. He was having a tough time taking care of the basketball. Really not a characteristic there. Morris with the left hand couldn't hit it. Batting in with a rebound. Knocked away. Here's Williams. Behind the back and he lost it. Jason Williams has had a tough time turning it over tonight. Blake. Sloppy basketball game at the onset right now. Both teams really trying to get into a rhythm early and establish the dominance. Maryland's still putting a lot of pressure on Duke, who's not taking care of the basketball. Foul away from the ball, an illegal screen on Battier. Coach Gary Williams is looking at his troops and saying, okay, now, this is the third opportunity in a row. We have to take advantage of this. We can't continue to get these breaks against a great team like Duke and not take advantage of it. A good point. You don't get that many opportunities. Duke has had the ball three times in this half. They have turned it over three times. Blake tried to lob it in the ball. I hit to James. Dixon trying to get back. James lost to Dunleavy. He got it back and put it in. What hustle by Dunleavy. Oh, that's great hustle. I think Blake's got to get that basketball. You can't let that happen. You don't go up there and just kind of passively grab but You go up and snatch that ball down. Turn and go the other way. Dunley, Dunley we already with 12 points and seven boards. Great awareness by Dunley. With good, good basketball, Savage. Never quit. Mouton over Dunley. Got the answer. This kid, the basketball, he's come to play. Having a spectacular ball game. 13 points to lead back to nine. Battier open for three. Mouton, the rebound, 6-6. Six, six. He skies. <laughs> he's having a good time tonight. He has really come to play the game this evening, and he is the spark that they need. You need someone to get you going. He is the one that's going to do it in the second half of this game. Nice crossover by Blake. Gets free, and then got caught up in the air and threw it away. Left his feet. Cardinal sent a basketball. Never leave your feet in order to pass the basketball. Williams for three. He's been so quiet. James offensive rebound. Dunleavy with a tip. Boozer. Boozer again. Finally got it in the foul. That's what Duke's all about, competitiveness. They will not quit. They continue to battle. The great job there was done by Boozer, tipping the basketball. When you cannot grasp the basketball or corral it, you tip it, keep it alive, and end up tipping it to himself. Great hustle. Shot goes up. Williams misses the shot. Nate James, great hustle. It comes a tip, right? Done leaving. Boozer's up, misses the shot. Tip, tip, grab. Gotta get that ball, man. Boozer. Terrence Morris called for his third foul. Boozer completes the three-point play. Remember, this was a Duke team who was out-rebounded 26-16 in the first half, and they just showed you they really got cranked up went to the boards. They're right back in this ballgame. Terrell needs good possession. Quality shot. Dixon fouled by Dunleavy. That's three on Dunleavy. That's a tough call. Dunleavy had the position. I didn't think there was enough for a ball. Let him play. Let him go. I don't think it really impeded the progress. It was going to turn the corner and come straight across the lane. The different foul. I'll agree with that one. Duke has been down by as many as 15. Brad, now they're back within six. They, they, they're, they're always beating people so handily. You don't realize when they're getting back in the games. I mean, you think they're down 20 points now, but they're right there. Blake around the screen. Good shot. That's a big shot. He needed that shot. His team needed that shot. Right. You don't look to Blake for scoring, but he has five points to go with the seven. Oh, what a steal! Dixon, Battier getting back. Oh, great hustle! Man, Duhon came out of nowhere. They were so aware of Battier, and Duhon jumps up and gets the ball. Boozer to a loose touch shot. Off balance oh. three, and he is fouled. That is a three-shot foul on Blake. Why in the world would you commit that foul? And that's three on Blake. That was an off-balance shot. There's I think no a way. very ill-advised shot oh, by Williams. Terrible shot. There's no way he's going to make that shot. Let's take a look at this shot. He's moving away from the basket. He's not square. Oh, man. I didn't see it. Oh, what a bad call. He didn't even touch it. First one spins out. He didn't even touch it. That's not good. Been a couple you would wonder about tonight. Well, I think in this game, though, there's so much anticipation, and when you have two heavyweights going at it, 
you know, the anticipation sometimes leads to a call. That's not a good call right there, though. Williams, a player of the year candidate. Five points. He's had seven turnovers and misses another free throw. It's one of those nights. One out of four from the line. He's a 73% free throw shooter. And he is just struggling this evening. And the crowd really on him now, and he answers with one free throw. And the lead cut back to eight. Maryland can go right at them. Great some foul opportunities. Baxter. No basket offensive foul on Baxter. That's three on Lonnie. And guess who drew the charge? Shane Battier. He has drawn more charges than anyone in Duke history. He's just brilliant at it. Right, he posted up his outside the lane. That's a charge. That's a charge. I think if I saw Battier standing in front of me, I'd just go the other way. There's no point in it. He'll either draw a charge or block it. Yeah. Boos spins over Baxter. 51-45. Maryland's got to give himself an opportunity. to get a good quality shot. There he goes. Steve Blake. Coming down, slowing the ball down. Spread your offense. Execute. And it's uh, hard hard right in for Maryland. He had a big first half. Mike Juan Dixon hasn't been in this game a while. I mean, he's, he's usually the, the hot hand for Maryland. They've really done a good job on him this evening. Blake with the shot clock of 10. He'll try another three. Boozer with a rebound. Good defensive stand by Duke. Better get back. Battier, and he is fouled. That will be no basket. Offensive foul. Whoa! Offensive foul. Nate James is a little out of control. Right there, good job by Lonnie Baxter. Stepping in, giving up his body. You usually don't see that foul call once the ball's gone because all the attention to that's a good play. That'll be three on Battier. Hey, so not anybody left to play. That's right. Really done a good job on Dixon. Maryland's got great support, though, from everyone else. Trying to penetrate, and if that's on Patty Yang, that's four. Juan Dixon showing the ability to break down the defense. That's what makes guys who can handle the basketball so valuable. Especially if you can handle it in traffic. Gets the much bigger Patty Yang on him. Dixon's free throw is good. I think they called the last foul on Duhon and not Battier. That would be one on Duhon and keeps Battier at three. It's a break for Duke. 53-45, back in a moment. Down to eight with 15.46 to go in the ballgame. Welcome back to College Park, everybody. Mike Patrick, Brad Doherty, glad to have you with us. We talked about Maryland's depth and height as being advantages. They've taken, they have taken advantage of both of those. They've done a good job not allowing Duke to have second shot opportunities. Taj Holden, Martish, Baxter, those guys have corralled the basketball, created transition opportunities. They need to continue to do that in order to have a chance to win this ball game. Duke basketball, Williams, who has struggled all night. We haven't gotten into sequencing. We tried it. It's hard, too, to the guy who runs the show because you got everybody else involved. Especially when he also is for scoring another steal by Dixon. He has been sensational on defense. Wow. It's just like such a nice touch. It looks like it goes in every time he shoots it. He really, I told you, you can't fool around with the ball around here. And he's still up to Jason Williams, one of the best ball handlers in the country. Long Dixon. Because Jason Williams, one of the better ball handlers in the country, like I said. And there's that guy, Juan Dixon. And that's a layup for him. This will send Boozer to the free throw. Three on Marvison. Jeff 
you at this point on, if you're Maryland, is you don't really try to protect your lead. You go in, you maintain, and you execute. That's what that provides the quality of shot that you're going to get on the offensive end, as well as defensive execution. Loser makes them both. We're back to an eight-point game. Dick Vitale promised he'd be watching this game during a Super Bowl party at home. No wonder he wanted to be here so bad. Hey, hey, Dick. Oh, a lot of contact, no whistle, and now the whistle. And it will be Taj Holden, offensive foul. Yeah, he was a little out of control in that possession. If you go up nice and strong, you may have an opportunity to put the, you put the onus on the official. But you see right here, Nicholas turns the corner. I wonder who drew the charge. Oh, it's that number, number 31 guy again. He is all over the court. Good call. Duke now with a chance to cut into an eight-point lead. Talk on that screen. Whoa! Williams, a tough pass, point blank to Boozer, who thought it was for somebody else and let it go. His passes have so much zippers. Duke has turned it over 16 times tonight. And a lot of that has to do with Maryland's defense, but some that you pointed out earlier have been unforced error. Yeah, he, he has a lot of zip on those passes. Dix short on the jumper. He needs to come down and get a stop. Duke needs to come down and get a basket. You see Jason Williams be called for palming the basketball. He's gotten it down to a science, but that time he got a little high with it. Very rarely do you see that call made. That's right. Jason Williams. Have a tough time. Have a tough evening this evening. Whoa, a little Allen Iverson crossover there. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work in this leg. <laughs> right at that booze right there. Nice fake batty he blocks it from behind, but the foul will be on Boozer before that. That's three on Boozer. Good post up a holder. Chris Collins talking to uh, his point guard Jason Williams. Jason's having a tough evening, as we've mentioned several times, but he'll bounce back. He'll come back out. When, when he comes back in to substitute for Duhon, he'll be ready to play. He's thinking about it right now, thinking of how he can make himself calm down, get his teammates involved a little more. Taj Holden, is sophomore from Little River, New Jersey. I guarantee you this guy is going to be a star in the ACC. Without question. Williams, only six points. He has turned it over ten times. Coming into this ball game, Williams had 116 assists and only 65 turnovers for the season. Wow. Well, you got to get to him. That's the, that's the game plan. you got to get to him. He is the controller of the tempo offensively. Duhon, the freshman, will now run the ball for Dunleavy, that's a tough pass. Last touch by Maryland, out to Duke. Partisan made an excellent play. The pass was made below when, it, when the play was overrun by Mouton, and Martisic saved that play, get his hand on that ball. Big wingspan on the seven-footer. Who gives him just quality minutes. Doesn't he? Really, he really has done a good job this year. Got a great rotation going right now. Maryland is playing as well as anybody in the country. Batting in for three. Tip won't go. Rebound to Dixon. Little guy can get up there. He really is a battler on that backboard. Spread the offense. Maryland playing with great confidence. Defense by Maryland. Nowhere to go. Martin oh, Nice move. Nice move. Post move. Flash into the middle, big and strong. Spin. Nobody can stay with you. Excellent post move. 58 47. Maryland bidding for the upset. Dunleavy nearly had it taken away by Miller. And there's a hold on the way in. Let's watch this move by Martis. Steps into the middle of the lane, nice and big. Oh, nice spin. Little jump hook. You can't block it, can't stop it. He's been huge this evening. Then he picks up his fourth foul on the other end. Six on the team. Get out on him. A lot of teams are using the lane. Dunleavy got around Miller, and then Marta Sitch hacked him. 
all happened with the breakdown on Miller. He got out with Dunleavy on the three point at the three point line, but Dunleavy went around him too easily. Not enough denial defensively. Oh, we were corrected. The last foul was not on uh, Martisich. The one before was his third. Now he has to have four. Dunleavy hits the free throw. We'll come back with a great substitution pass. Bringing back Baxter and, and Morris from Artis Sitch and Holt. And they have been well rested the entire game. Baxter ready to go. Dunleavy hits them both, 58-49. Dunleavy's keeping it alive, 14.7 boards. For Mike Dunleavy. Hold the throw, out the throw. Dixon loses it. Miller back on James, and Miller reached in the hard foul on Nate James. Good play by Miller. Hustling back. Dixon lost his balance, a little out of control. See him make the drive. Tries to cut in. Got tripped up there. James down. Miller gets hurt right in front of him. Hard foul. Part of the game. Not trying to hurt anyone. He's trying to alleviate, stop the basket. Well, you're right. You don't want to hurt anybody, but you sure don't want to give anybody an easy way up here. Well, you don't want to give him that. He's going hard to the basket. You're coming hard. Nobody's going to get hurt. The Duke starters have two guys in double figures right now. Boozer and Dunley. Battier and Williams, two of the most lethal scorers in the conference, have been held under 10. You're going to beat them. That's about the only yeah. way to beat them. Yeah. When you see numbers like that for those guys, that's that's about as good as it's going to get in your opportunity to take advantage and win against this ball club. Because they're not going to give it to you. And as poorly as they have played in terms of shooting and turnovers since the opening few minutes, this would get them back within seven. That's the whole gist. I mean, if they just start getting into a little bit of a rhythm, I mean, they're, they're squaring up balls in. They're playing poorly, and they're down seven points. And they are a devastating three-point shooting team. If they get hot, even if it's at the end, they've still got the chance. Mouton. And foul before the shot. Two times going up. High wire act down on the baseline. Got about six inches of space, and he fit his body through it and got the foul. Christensen picks up his second. And Jason Williams is going to check back into the ballgame to replace Chris Duhon. Duhon comes in, gives excellent minutes, young freshman. Does a wonderful job taking care of the offense. Good shooter. Well, when you see a great player like Jason Williams struggling, you just hope he's going to break out of that slump. Yeah, you do. Oh, holy cow! He knew that was a take. He, said he saw Princess step up on him. He says this cat can't go to him. going to buy him. Give me some room. How spectacular was that off the glass? Terrence Morris with 11. Woo! Down the lane goes Williams, and that may get him on track. He needs some help, though. He needs some help. Somebody's got to help him. Nicholas. <laughs> Shot. He makes Williams makes the shot. He's on the floor. He gets knocked down. Somebody's got to help him. His guy's got the ball in the transition. Give me a couple. And credit Nicholas for being smart enough to take advantage of it. Don't leave the end of the lane with a run. That's just playing the game right there. You, you, didn't, you don't teach that. That's just feel for the game. Not that easy to move to your left and then switch to your right hand and hit the shot, but he made it look effortless. Dunleavy is very smooth. Morris, nice beat the factor, but it's blocked. I don't think the basket will count. It won't. Molly Baxter goes to the bucket hard. Let's see what happens here. Nice pass. Baxter goes to the bucket hard. Batty gets the block. They call the foul on the previous play on Shane Batty. Third foul on Battier. Baxter at the line hits the first. Only a 63% free throw shooter. 
works hard at though, Mike. I was down here earlier today around noon, and he was out here shooting free throws by himself, getting ready for tonight. I asked him, I said, what do you got to do tonight, Lonnie? He said, you got to play hard the whole time. And he called me Mr. Well, uh, it's reached that point, hasn't it? Baxter misses the second move time offensive rebound. That would have been huge for the Turks. The lead is eight. That was Baxter's first point of the night, by the way. Booster blocked from behind by Morris, but that's going to be a foul. That was really good defense. May have been a push from behind. Morris certainly got all ball. May have gotten him with the body. Let's see what happened here. Nice pass on the baseline by Duhon. Looks like he may have got him on the arm. You see the sandwich there, and the ball comes squirting out. Uh, Morris may have gotten on the arm. Loser misses the first. Still a lot of time left in this ball game. 11:29. Well, it really is a lot of time. Like you say, it seems like it's two minutes left. Doesn't the, it? The feel in here, but this, this, is a, this is a heck of a lot of basketball to play. And all those fouls that each team has committed, it's going to hurt them in the last five minutes. And 16 fouls called here in the second half so far. 11:29 to go. Back in a moment. 63-56 with 11.29 to go in the ballgame. You know, Mike, it's been a tough even for Jason Williams. Really having trouble getting into the flow of the game. Makes a nice, snappy pass. Maybe a little high to Boozer. He says, hey, grab that ball, big fella. Comes back a couple plays later. Gets the carrying call. Coach Case talking to him, said, hey, okay, settle down. Everything's fine. We're still in this ballgame. A lot of time. You're going to be a factor. Get your head in the game. Williams comes in averaging 21-1 points a game. That's second in the ACC. 6.1 assists. That's third. And he is well below all of those. And throw in 10 turnovers. It has been a struggle for the All-American. Substitution here, Mike, with, with Will Cox and Holden back in the game. Foul on Williams as he's trying to put some pressure on Blake. That's one on Jason Williams. A lot of whistles blowing in this ball game. I like to see the game. And they're doing a good job. All these officials do a good job. But you really want to see the game happen. Let it play. Let them go. The perimeter fouls. Unless somebody's getting really beat up out there. Let it happen. You know, let it go. Part Blake, of the game. Blake 5.7 assists tonight. A savvy young player. He sees the court really well, puts the ball in the right people's hands, takes shots when he needs to take them. Really runs the show well. Been a point guard his entire life. Harry Williams says he knows the game beautifully. White hits a pair. Seven points, seven assists. The lead is back to ten. White's pretty good defensively, too. And there's a walk on Zuha. Hoops trying to go with a small lineup in the front court, putting Duhon and Williams in together. Duhon, an excellent shooter. Duke has turned it over 18 times. There's the lob. Miller inside. He's fouled before he can get off the shot. I'm watching Gary Williams here. I'm looking for the sweat to start coming through his coat. Just awareness right here on, du on Maryland's behalf. Duke not getting back, not hustling back. Danny Miller hustling, getting, making eye contact with his goal. Duhon committed to personal. Miller struggled with the free throw line this year. 54% coming off the bench. Got that one, he'll get another. Those young guys struggle shooting free throws and they have too many parts that move in their shot. Mm -hmm. you watch a young man shoot, if there's too many parts that move, it's going to be some mechanical breakdowns from time to time. That looks good. Better stroke. The lead is back to 11. Williams oh. nearly threw it away again. Battier triple team, and he throws it away. Jason Williams moves. Tonight, it seems like he's moving at a different level than the rest of his teammates. He is so fast and turns the corner so hard but they're ill-prepared to catch a lot of the passes that he's throwing. Blake against Williams. Good pass. 
Holmes let's get that wouldn't go for him you don't worry about those that's a good shot opportunity excellent play good execution good now play some defense he hit that shot 10 times seven of them over in Rattier inside the three-pointer under the miss got the rebound mugged by Mouton from Maryland I'll give you that foul that's a good foul but you don't give up that second shot they've done such an excellent job in the first half of corralling the basketball, not giving Duke second shot opportunities. They need to keep that intensity, keep pushing that level of desire to rebound that basketball up. Battier going for his 10th point of the night and has it. He's hit only three out of 11 from the floor. I think there are going to be times and have been the last couple of years, Battier plays so many minutes where his shooting stroke gets a little off because he just gets tired, although facially he never shows it. Yeah, but he, he, he hits the floor a lot. That just saps the strength yep. of it. And that's true. That's going to happen. 67 to 58. Maryland has played brilliant. Well, they had an excellent basketball game. They're very well prepared tonight. Tough shot. As I said earlier, he's going to make those. Those can be back breakers. A 6-10 power player who can go outside and bury the shot. Golden, 12 points and five rebounds. Boozer. Good move by Boozer. 70 to 60. Mouton has been on fire the entire ball game with a miss. Battier with a rebound. And Duke calls a timeout to save it. Tonight, following the game on ESPN, the men's final of the Australian Open for Melbourne. Andre Agassi trying to defend his title. He won it a year ago. He'll face unseated Arno Clement. Agassi needed five sets to beat Patrick Rafter to reach the championship. Clement became the first freshman to advance to the Australian Open final since 1928. Mike, have you heard much on the Rick Patino watch? What's going on? I have not. The last I heard was UNLV was the best possibility. Since then, nothing. That's what I've heard. I'll tell you, a great candidate for that UNLV job. This is not known yet, but it may be Phil Ford from North Carolina. Is that right? Yes, sir. I think he'd be an excellent choice for those people down there. Oh, I do. I think Phil Ford would be an excellent choice anywhere. Really, at loose right. ends after uh, uh, Doherty comes in, brings his own staff with him, and Phil is cut loose, the right. longtime assistant. Along with uh, Pat Sullivan. Yes, Dave Hammers, those guys. Yeah. Phil's just biding his time. I think he'll be a, the next great college coach, though. Just needs the opportunity. Uh, he's a wonderful person. Nate James, the three. He's been oh. close to the game. Halfway down, comes out. I can't believe that came out of the bucket. Good pass. Oh, man. Great hustle. Batty. Batty got hands. back to save an easy basket, and Blake just sees everything. I mean, it's incredible the amount of intensity that Maryland's attacking the offensive end of the floor with. I mean, every guy on that offensive end, their eyes are as big as saucers. They're looking for that ball. They're hungry. They smell blood in the water. Look at that. Inbounds pass, so easy opportunity, and they blow it. But the creating of those surprised that he was that wide open. Yeah, that's right. Creating of those opportunities. That's what's important. Jason Williams, crowd wanted an offensive foul. Instead, they get a Williams bucket. 9.09 to go in the game, but still an eight-point lead. As well as Maryland has played, and as poorly as Duke has played, Brad, it's an eight-point game. That's what I keep saying. They're playing poorly, but they're right there. Two big baskets, and they're in the ball game. See, Williams showing his great ability to just penetrate. Strong body. Ducking and weaving, that's what he does really well, is get to the front of that goal. That's six foot two inches tall, six three, whatever he is. He gets right to the front of the rim. This was a guy last year they brought in. Uh, they let him have the point guard position, knowing there were going to be an awful lot of mistakes made as he learned to play point guard at this level. And certainly that uh, that move by Mike Krzyzewski has paid off in the long run. Now he has a point guard who scores 20 points a game and is a national player of the year camp. And, and makes all the players around him better. Plays like he just made. You're going to remember that on defense next time. You're going to collapse on him. Then you're wide open. Boozer's wide open for a dunk. Nine oh six left in the ball game. Maryland can't get careless with the ball. 
We can make good quality plays, make things happen. Blake calls out what he wants. He loses it on him. Blake for the runner. Got it. That's great awareness when the point guard turns that corner. I gotta help though. The, the, the big man has to step out on that pick and stop the basketball. You can't let a guard cut the corner because you're behind and now you're in trouble. Steve Blake with nine. Dunleavy wow. tough shot from the baseline. Excellent shot by Mike Dunleavy. Dunleavy with 18 tonight. against Batty, Batty, Baxter been quiet all night his first field goal he's been quiet all night had the fouls but he's a big time player in the ACC he's gonna make shots like that you gotta gotta be aware of who's on the floor at all times 74 64 Maryland the crowd has been into it the entire game nice crossover by Williams James for three I got I, I, those are back breakers and they can hit 10 of them in a row. That is, a, that is the truth. This is a great outside shooting team. That's what Jason Williams possesses, that potential to create shots for his teammates. So far, Duke has been cold. Six out of 19 oh, from outside. Fan pass. Blake, nice save. Oh, what a great save. Tremendous awareness by Blake. Now he'll try a three. Tough shot. Got a lot of time on the clock. Take a better shot. I feel like you have to press sometimes when you're such a heated route, a heated game. You want to make things happen. Got to let them come to you a little bit. James gives it up to Williams. 74 67 Maryland. Oh, my is 40 feet to the Forever away from the bucket. And there is Blake. Blake crashes into James, and Mike Krzyzewski is really upset. He thought Nate James was fouled. Blake just cut the legs out from under him. It will be Maryland's ball. Hey Chris, we have 7.01 to go here. Maryland up by seven over Duke. Terps basketball. They have Miller, Morris, Blake, Dixon, and Baxter on the court. That's what I've heard Juan Dixon. He's been quiet. Been a part of the offense all week. Good pass. Baxter leans into the loser and hits it. Nice move. He got into the middle of that lane way too easy. Baxter with five points in the last couple of minutes to lead back to nine. Williams, good head fake to get three. Batty with the chance to shoot a three. Pass by. Excellent defense by Terrence Morris. Nowhere to go. Good defense. Very good. Batty over Morris. And the rebound to Miller. Finished by Terrence Mars. That's why I am the ACC Player of the Year candidate. In the big games, I'm finishing just like that. Great play. That makes it 78 to 67. Here's the Miller Lake storyline. Duke with an uncharacteristic 19 turnovers. 10 of them from Jason Williams. Maryland's had 27 off the bench, and Byron Mouton, his first career double double. 13 points and 10 boards. And if Maryland goes on to win this game, they will look back and see they got contributions from everybody. Right. Everyone's participating in this game and giving them something. And Shane Battier has been stone cold for 21 30s, not hit a field goal. Oh, you might write that down, and you'll never see it again. Right. Both he and Williams have struggled shooting the basketball. Good defense by Maryland. Up in the passing lane. Everybody's got somebody. Good defense. And that's what's keyed this game the entire time. Maryland has played excellent defense. 20 turnovers. They played physical. They played smart, aggressively. Taking away what Duke likes to do. Limited their offense. 
Miller. And that's a kick. Good defense by Dunleavy. Terpsy's shot 51% from the floor tonight against the Duke defense that normally gives up around 40% or less. Good job. Good smart. Morris. You made a good comment earlier, Brad. They smell blood in the water. Boy, don't they? They really do. And that's when you can tell how good a team's really going to be. Williams, nice dive, can't finish. Do they continue to try to win the game or do they get passing the Jonathan Lewis? Great pass! Blake to the line! Oh, that can see the floor. Steve Blake is unbelievable passing the basketball. Unbelievable. He's made five passes tonight as good as you're going to see anywhere. Eight assists. There's his father who drives up from Miami Lakes, Florida to College Park for every game. Boozer. Nice shot. Solid shot by Boozer. I'll tell you what, Steve Blake, I'm becoming a huge fan this evening. I enjoyed watching him play, but I didn't know he could see the floor that well. Oh, he's tough. The decisions he made, really, really wonderful. Always very good at keeping his dribble alive. Right. Really lucky to have a player like that on the team. He's so sad. 13 on the shot clock. Blake into the lane. Nice. Steve Blake, Steve Blake, you're the man! 11 man. points for Blake, the lead has grown to 13. This Maryland basketball club looks like the best team in the country tonight. They are playing outstanding on both ends of the floor. Since the loss to North Carolina, this is the way they have played. They've got such a purpose now. Look at these kids' eyes. You live with that. If that's the best shot they can get, that's fine. That is a hard shot to make. Credit Boy, you're right. You just there. credit your defense for that. That's right. 82-71. Miller guarded by Duhon. Spread the court. Be careful with your passes. You got in the right man's hand right now. Trying to burn some time off the clock around the 319. I believe the call may have been an offensive goal tent. But it will give the ball to Duke with 3.12 to go. And now we've got a timeout back after this. We're in College Park, Maryland for the Terrapins and the Blue Devils. 82-71 following our ball game. We will have coverage of the Australian Open for you as Agassi goes for another Grand Slam championship. The lead here is 11. And Brad, Lord knows I've been wrong a lot of times, but you just don't get the feeling that Duke is going to make that run. No, oh, yeah, Duke continues to play hard every possession, but they just don't seem to be in that, have that sink, that swagger, that rhythm that, that Duke usually brings to a basketball game or a contest. I think they're just off the mark tonight. It's one of those nights. And I think the reason for that is Maryland's defense. Without they played with great intensity. Don't, don't let me take away from what they have done. They have played an excellent basketball game. Young man, right? Steve Blake's playing wonderful. 11 points, 9 assists, has turned it over just three times. So many, so many guys in this team have contributed tonight. It's just it's hard to single one out. Battier working on holding, and he's hit on the wrist. That'll be a three shot foul. Worst thing you can do is foul out there, stop the clock, and give a chance to score three points. Four on Taj Holden. We worked all week on guarding the extended areas. He's out. Stand up. Let it work. Shot gets off. Shot gets off. Duke has not even shot the ball well from the free throw line tonight. Williams has missed several. Battier has that one rattle out. 13 points 
on the night for Shane Battier. Foul under the basket, not away from it. That may have been the only mistake Taj Holmes made tonight. That's correct. He's been a wonderful game as well. Battier misses two out of three. 82 72. Maryland won in Durham last year. They're trying to win at home against Duke and lead North Carolina as the only undefeated team left in the conference. Dixon. Got it. Please allow them. Duke's allowing Maryland just to get too deep. Every post up is too deep. You gotta get him off that block. 84 72. Now, Duke trying to spread out on the court so they can get some three-point opportunities, and Dixon commits a foul on the way in. That's not what Gary Williams wanted. See Dixon, nice post-up, step into the lane. Oh, good little fake. They called that foul on Steve Blake. Yes, they did. And that's four on Blake. Possibly from the extension of the hand. Anytime you extend your hand away from the body. And Williams misses another free throw. Well, he is go. two out of six from the line. And Jason Williams is a 76% free throw shooter. Some nights you don't have it. Yeah, you don't. You really don't. And then you continue to work hard, continue to push. 84-73. Full court pressure. Blake got caught up in the air, nearly lost it. Now Baxter double team. And Maryland called a timeout. There's defensive pressure, I do. Got a timeout. 2:14 left in the game. Maryland a six and one. ACC record. It would also drop Duke to six and one, and the Tar Heels of North Carolina would be sitting alone atop the ACC with a game tomorrow at North Carolina State. And this conference is just loaded. Matt Darty down in North Carolina doing an excellent job. Got that team playing with great desire and commitment. This conference is so good, top to bottom. And Duke and Maryland. Terps having the best of it. Marcus has lost it. Battier with a rebound. Good pass. Blake beat Williams around the corner. Got inside. No one couldn't commit finish the shot. Duke moves to score on every possession here, and Blake will pick up his fifth. And again, the clock stops. That's a problem. I don't want to stop that clock. Terrible foul. 25. Jason Williams comes down. Watch how quick this crossover is. There's the foul right there. So Blake fouls out after a brilliant game. 11 points, 9 assists, 5 of them spectacular. And his family knew the drive was worth it tonight. Well, he deserves a standing ovation. He has played excellent. Control the tempo of this game. Outstanding game on the right Jason Williams will go back to the free throw line. Two minutes in this game. And if you think Maryland really had a home court advantage against Duke, you can forget it. Duke's won 13 of the last 15 here at Cole Fieldhouse, even though Maryland has dominated everybody else here at home. Yeah. The problem is, you continue to score points when the clock's not moving. It doesn't matter if there's 10 seconds left in the game. It becomes a tighter game. That cuts it to single digits, and now Blake, their best ball handler, is out of the game. Defensive pressure Duke submitting is very, very difficult to bring the ball up again. Plus, and Battier reached around, tried for the steal, called for the foul. Four on Battier. You know, another thing I like about Battier, here's a situation where you know the kid's got to be down. He reaches in, commits a foul, no whining, no nothing, no. raises his hand, walks away. That's exactly right. Continues to play hard. Class act. The Australian Open coming up next. 
Nicholas will go to the line trying to get it back to double digits and does. Nicholas out of Hempstead, New York. Dunleavy is back in. Only a minute 44 to go. Before tonight, Duke had lost one game by one point at Stanford. Now, if you're Maryland, do you defend the threes and forget the rest? I think you do. I think you don't. <laughs> That's like the fifth trip in a row where Maryland has committed a foul and allowed them to stop the clock. I don't understand. you got to keep your hands off of guys. And you're, you're, if you're a point guard or a two guard, and you're out defending on that perimeter, move your feet. You channel people. You expect help to come and rotations to take place in order to shut down, folks. I think you continue to defend until the end of the basketball game. But you got to be smart. I mean, they've got Duke on a resuscitator right now, and instead of pulling the plug out of the wall, they're giving him free oxygen. Exactly. They continue to give them opportunities to score points. You've got to stop that. If they drive to the front of the goal, tough defense, the referee's not likely going to call a foul if it's good, heavy defensive contact. Outside, he's going to call it every time. And they're in the bonus. Double bonus for both ball clubs. Had a lot of fouls in the second half. Morris will come back in. Boozer will come back in, and they want to get Battier out for this defensive series so he doesn't pick up his final foul. About the only time you'll ever see Battier on the bench. There's a lot of minutes, heavy minutes. Nine-point game, a minute 38 left. Nicholas. Fouled by Williams. Good foul. Stop the clock. Make them earn it. Having been in a situation in this league where you played in so many big games and won so many big games, talk about the psychological boost this is going to give Maryland for the rest of the year. Well, Maryland's been playing basketball well for about the past 14 games. They had a slip up against North Carolina, a game that they played pretty well with. And just had some letdowns, but to come back and to play this well against this Duke basketball team, it's going to be interesting to see what they do from here on. Yeah, these young basketball players are getting a lot of great experience. It's going to help them in the end of the year. The question is, do they take this game and just say, okay, you use it as an approach of, we're going to play every game like this, this is how we play, or do you actually use it as a springboard going forward to say, hey, we beat Duke, we can beat anybody in this conference. We know we can. Williams penetrating. Back outside, Dunleavy for three. Nate James with a rebound, and it's a jump ball. Possession arrow to Maryland, and Mouton is the man who tied him up. Very good job by Mouton. Getting in there, digging the ball out, being aggressive. Not, not quitting just because the time's seeping away. And you know what Gary Williams is going to do? He's going to say, I told you, I told you, if we played this way, this is what could happen. That's right. That's what he preaches. Intense, discipline-oriented basketball. That's what they've been tonight is a discipline basketball team. Nicholas across the timeline. And Dunleavy with a reach-around foul. Only a minute 15 to go. Well, this is a big one. The Terps came in ranked 10th. Certainly this win would boost them in the national rankings. They would now have a share of second place in the ACC with Duke at 6-1. North Carolina trying to go 7-0. They play tomorrow at North Carolina State. The Australian Open already underway. We will pick up our coverage as soon as we're done here. Dixon trying to make it a 12-point lead. Maryland's defense has held the number one scoring team in the country to 77 so far. No foul, just aggressive defense. James out of the corner for three. Eighty-nine-eighty with a minute five to go. We'll be back to Cole Fieldhouse for the last 105 after this. 89-80, the Terps on top of the Duke Blue Devils with 105 to go in the ballgame. Steve Blake 
our player of the game. Just a brilliant evening for Blake. Nine assists, spectacular passes. Always seeing where his teammates are, and he chipped in with some excellent shooting as well. And played tough defense. Really sees the floor well. He does so many things well, but the controlling of the tempo of the basketball game by Steve Blake was excellent tonight. He was just like a coach on the floor. I know Gary Williams is very proud of this one. Our New York Life player of the game. The lead is nine. Foul in backcourt with one on one to go. And the parade to the foul line continues. Both teams in the double bonus for a long time. Maryland with two timeouts left. Duke is done. And the possession arrow would go the Blue Devils' way. Doesn't look like the possession arrow is going to make much of a difference in the last one on one. See Gary Williams there. He's still coaching his best. <laughs> This guy right here, he's one of the great coaches in college basketball. I just don't think he gets enough credit. He deserves more credit. He's won everywhere he's been, and he, he brings so much passion to the game. It's great to have guys like him. You know, he has been at some high-profile programs at, at Maryland, of course, Boston College, Ohio State, but he started at American University here in the district. He had no chance to win, right. none, right. and he did anyway. That's right. And that exemplifies Gary Williams. Right. Always admired him. The crowd on their feet. Williams goes down the lane to lay it in. Duke can no longer stop the clock. 53-5 to go. It's an eight-point lead. They need a miracle. There's one. Williams for three. Cut it to five. Now they need two more miracles. And Maryland will call timeout with 48.7 left. Someone asked earlier, why is it Jason Williams out of the game? This That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you see the great defense here. There's a hand on the ball. Constant activity by Williams. Tough shot. The wherewithal to stay behind the three-point line and make it. Five-point game. Wow. Well, now you have given Duke something really to shoot for. Down by five, it's realistic with 48.7 seconds to go. And, and you got to think ahead as a coach. If you're coaching this young basketball team of Maryland, you get a quality shot on this end, you come to the other end, if they get a shot, you can test it, but you'd rather have them make a shot while the clock is moving as opposed to fouling, having them shoot two shots with no time moving. Which they did on five consecutive possessions, unbelievable. Right. Or this game might already be over. And here's a foul before the inbounds pass. Going to be called on Andre Buckner. Mike Krzyzewski talking to Tim Hinman, Tim Higgins. Looks like that was more philosophical than anything else. <laughs> Coach K works hard on those officials. Always putting in their ear, giving them his, his three cents worth. And they listen. Huge shots coming up right now. Nicholas has to step in and really knock these down. You have to have these shots. He's hit four out of six, but he's an 80% free throw shooter on the year. And misses the first. Need this bucket. This would be the most improbable of comebacks, wouldn't it? I just, they played so well. It would just be, I mean, it would be catastrophic because they played, they've beaten them ever since about four minutes into the basketball. Exactly. They've never yielded. Missed them both. Duhon with a rebound. It's a five-point game. Duke has the ball. Do you believe what you're seeing? Oh. It's another three. It's a two-point game. Holy cow. And now Holden will call a timeout. This is absolutely scary. Wow. Maryland has played a brilliant basketball game. Duke hasn't been anywhere near the top of its game. And guess what? Duke's back within two at Coldfield. This is, this is painful for this Maryland basketball club. And you can see they've lost so much confidence. This young man right here, Jason Williams, he is going to stick a dagger in your heart. He has had a horrible night in the first That's part right. of this basketball game, but he shows what type of player he is by not quitting. He has hit two of the biggest shots in the game as well. That's incredible. He has 23 points for the game. More impressively, he has eight points in the last 20 seconds. After the first 30 minutes of the game, he was doing absolutely nothing, turning it over, not playing well. 
I mean, that's incredible. I don't mean to shy the young man by saying he's having a horrible game, but he's struggled. No, but it's true, and he would be the first oh, one to sure. admit it. But he has just shown a lot of guts, a lot of fortitude to come back and to take those shots and know he's going to make them. Neither team with a timeout left. The possession arrow is in favor of Duke. Oh. Well, this crowd is stunned, and quite honestly, so am I. Wow. And if Duke only got this close because Maryland, I think, committed those silly fouls. I agree. Instead of I allowing agree. the clock to run. That's right. They committed the fouls on the long shots, stopped the clock, let them shoot free throws. Even if they didn't make it, they made a couple or a few enough to cut the lead. The Australian Open coming up, but we are not done here. We're going to have to make some free throws, Mike. You know the foul's coming. The shot clock, of course, 35 seconds. The game clock is 40.4. Dixon nearly lost it. Yeah. Duke basketball. Holy cow, are you incredible. kidding? That is incredible. Williams lost control. Got it back. That he is. Dunleavy for three. Tip. Tip won't go, but oh, the fall. Oh. 21.9 seconds left. If he had made that, the foul was called, the basket would have counted. It's incredible. This is one of the most stunning things oh, that I have incredible. ever seen in a basketball game. Well, we've lost our audio feed and our sincere apologies with 21.9 seconds to go. We're working to correct it. In the meantime, you can see Duke's Nate James on the line. One free throw remaining. He can tie this game in the final 22 seconds. If you've been watching, you've seen a truly stunning comeback by Duke. They down, trail by 10 points with about a minute to go in this game. Maryland, thanks to giveaways and missed free throws and three-point shots by Jason Williams. This is now a tie game. We've reestablished audio. Let's go back now for the final 20 seconds to Mike and Brad. Maryland can hold it till the end. The hold, take the last shot. Nicholas. Under 10 seconds to go. Guarded by Williams. Shot clock is off. Picked up his dribble. Fight for the ball. Nicholas at the buzzer. Oh. And we will go to <laughs> overtime. Are you kidding? Oh, this is incredible. Duke was down 90 to 80 with less than a minute to go. Maryland was in total control. And now we go to overtime. That's incredible. Wow. Thank you very much. We should not be here. It was 90 to 80 Maryland with 54 seconds to go in the game. Now it's 90 90. We go to overtime. And, and Duke has all the momentum. Steve Blake's out of the basketball game. The tide has turned in this ball game. 54 seconds left. Maryland gets the last 10. It's just staggering. Unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's way, I can't believe this way past my best time, but I'm an old country boy. I was ready to go back to the hotel and relax and catch up on the highlights. And look at here we are playing. Oh, uh, you don't want to leave this. No, I can't leave this. This is great. Can Maryland regroup? Psychologically, they have to be staggered by this. This is what you, you'll see what they're all about. Dixon leans into a tough shot, spins out. Nice move by Dixon there. May have gotten hit on the arm. You got to hand it to Jason Williams. I tell you what, he played one of the worst games he's played that I've ever seen him play in his two years at Duke. And he just keeps fighting. And just stayed in there, hung in there, and was the star at the end. I'll tell you, this is incredible. Talk about just demoralizing a team. Now, Jason Williams asked the official to uh, dry off the ball. There was a lot of moisture in it. And they acceded to his wish. Duke has scored 10 in a row. Williams into the lane. He's fouled. He gets so deep into that lane. You've got to get some weak side help. 
whether it be the weak side guard or even the small forward, stepping up to, to oh, oh, cut oh, off or mid his penetration. Oh, he gets too close to the front of the rim every time. And that was huge because Terrence Morris is gone. I mean, he, he needs some help on this backside. Somebody's got to step up and stop that. You need to trap that basketball. Make him get it rid of it. Get it out of his hands. That's huge. Morris is gone. Blake has already fouled out. You used a word earlier that I think is perfect for the way the fans in this Cole Fieldhouse feel right now. You said that if they lost this game, it would be catastrophic. Oh. They were, after the first three and a half minutes, starting the game, they have been in total control. They have literally played Duke off the floor. That's correct. And they let it just, it's just slip it's away. Off. It's just like sand through your fingers. And if they lose this ball game, you lose to North Carolina, you lose to Duke, to the powerhouse team. You start questioning yourself. Can we compete with these guys? Jason Williams has given Duke the lead in overtime with 420 to go. Jason has 24 points. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm sitting here saying that. That's incredible. You and I have seen a lot of basketball. I have never seen anything like this ever. It's incredible. 92-90 Duke. The first lead since they were up 25-24. A lot of people turning their TVs on, opening their newspapers up tomorrow and seeing this is going to be stunned. Baxter scores to tie it at 92. They're going to have to count on Baxter and Dixon an awful lot in overtime. Williams oh. down the lane. Battier wide open for oh. three. Great pass. Once again, Williams getting into the middle of the, the gut of the defense. I'm just staggered by I am too. I have no idea what to say. I can't believe that they just came back and made this a game. Dixon with a run. Great shot by Dixon. Well, Maryland's not going to back down. Duke now leads by one with 3.28 to go in a remarkable basketball game. Williams from way oh. outside. It spins out. That was down. That was a long three. <laughs> Juan Dixon will bring it up. He took some questionable shots, Jason Williams did in the first half, but after seeing his play the past several minutes, you don't question anything this young man does. Holding into Baxter, missed the shot, a lot of contact, bodies flying, saved to Mouton. Baxter, Bettier falling down, stole it. Wow, what a play. What a great play by Shane Battier. Just continues to scrap and dig. He's tired, too. Look at that young man. He lost his balance, was going down, and almost as an afterthought, just reached out and took it away. He's the best defensive player in the country. He has been for three years. Unbelievable. Dunley down the lane. Hit the behind by Miller. Nice play. Mouton. Charge. Mouton commits his third, and that was an easy call for Carl has to make. Yeah. Great defense by Duke. Super defense. The defense is playing. It looks like he may have been a little bit out of control. Let's see if we can take a look at this. Dunley that goes in. Great block right there by Miller. Here comes Mouton. Yep, defense is set. Boy, Nate James got back and just planted his feet. He's there waiting on him. Well, I'm glad I was here tonight. This is one of the most remarkable Changes in force of the ball game I've ever seen. I had a feeling this was going to be an unbelievable ball game. I told all my friends, I mean, this is going to be a great game. You've got to watch this game. Battier. Foul. He'll go to the line. Is it Dixon with a reach in? It is. Ball come up, so if someone was hit on the arm. Since Battier was hit on the arm, excuse me. He said four out of six from the line. Battier with 17 points and five rebounds. Just to give you an idea of how good Duke is, Battier and Williams, their two superstars, did not play well most of the night. Maryland played brilliantly, and somehow Duke is still ahead. Explain it. You know, we can look at all the stats and do all the, the, the micro mini coaching we want over here. It's, it's unexplainable. They just 
They did something that I, I have never seen within a 54 second window scoring that many points. In case you missed it, Agassi with a 4 to 1 first set lead in the Australian Open. Holden drives the baseline. He is clobbered by James. They go to the line for a pair. But Duke leads by three with a minute 44. Again, in case you didn't see the end of regulation. Maryland was up 90 to 80 with 54 seconds to go. Duke scored the rest and tied it at 90. It was staggering. You see the energy drain out of Maryland just a little bit here. They'll have that same big look in their eyes, but they've been hit by a truck. Jason Williams could have easily given it up and sulked and just forgotten about it, but he didn't. He kept fighting. Steve Blake, you see on the bench, fouled out of the ball game. Terrence Morris is gone as well. Taj holding a couple of big free throws. He has 14 huge points on the bench. Crowd comes to its feet again. We may play all night. You may get to see the fourth set of the Australian Open. Battier was short, but Baxter knocked it out of bounds. We'll grab that basketball on him. Didn't expect it to be that short, I don't think. Surprised him off his hand. Jason Williams will reset. 126 and counter. Williams launches another long three. Nate James with a long rebound. Battier for three. Short. Battier with his own rebound. And he's fouled by Dixon. No, check it. Timeout. Mike Krzyzewski. And Gary Williams really exercised. He thought there were a couple of offensive fouls against Duke on that last sequence. Timeout, 113 to go. Duke by one. Well, the comeback is not of Duke-like proportions yet, but Arno Clement has gotten back one of the breaks against Agassi, now serving at 2-4. We'll get you down to Melbourne as soon as the game is over, guys. Okay? All right, Chris. No, to, uh, I think you'd have to win the next 30 games to make it equivalent to what we've seen tonight. Shane Battier has played 43 minutes. Williams has played 41. They've got to be dragging. Tired tomorrow. Play as hard as you can tonight. This is all that matters at this moment. Williams guarded by Juan Dixon with those great hands and several steals. Duke spreads the court. You gave him a little test to see if anything is available, nothing's available. Now you need some clock. It's a great offense for them because they have so many great three-point shooters. Boozer nearly lost. Patty for three. before the shot what's the call out of bounds I believe to do and now there's only 4.9 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock what a tough break Mouton had the ball Duke has had five possessions in the last minute they just keep getting the ball back off and miss shots Jason Williams gets that basketball. You've got to help. Right here, you've got to be in the position to help. Miller's the help guy. Look at a hands on Dixon. I mean, Juan Dixon is looking for that steal. Got to help. It's two things we got to do here. Into the lane blocked by Holden. Battier has it. He's fouled. Got to get to stop that young man from turning that corner. I know it's hard. Boy, Duke has played just an unbelievable basketball game in the last five minutes. There he is again, turning the corner. That's what he does best. Good block. Lonnie Baxter wasn't ready to step in. He's got to get in front of that. Taj Holden with a brilliant block. Duke has had the ball. This will be staggering for the last minute and 28 seconds. They have had the ball. That's a little tough to score when you can't get your hands on it. I think of something else to say because I keep saying that's incredible. Well, that is it, it has <laughs> been. This has just been staggering wow. on so many levels. Wow. Battier can make it a three-point game. With 16.4 seconds left, a three would win it for Maryland. Here we go. Dixon. Dixon into the lane. Oh, Mario blocks it. Unbelievable. Williams with the ball. Wow. It's the 
the most remarkable wow. comeback I have ever seen. Unbelievable. Maryland gets the last 10 points in 54 seconds of regulation, and then they win it stunningly in overtime. I don't know what else to say, partner. Know, that's that's incredible. That is incredible. That is one of the most unbelievable feats I've ever seen in sports. That is phenomenal. Nice drive by Dixon. Just great defense. Just straight up, no foul, no contact, all basketball. Who else would be the defensive hero but Shane Battier and Gary Williams must be as stunned as the rest of this crowd. The final score, Duke 98, Maryland 96 in overtime. Coming up next, the men's final in the Australian Open. We've got Patrick McEnroe and Cliff Drysdale standing by. For my partner Brad Darty and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's go to the Australian Open.